Thank you. Thank you, Sandra, for the and Nadine for the for the introduction and the general announcements and welcoming us. Um, dear all, welcome to the uh, scientific part, to the content part of the meeting. Um, uh, and I, did, uh, I will swiftly move to the first speakers. Um, it's a long-standing tradition that the first presentation of the uh, CMC forum is a presentation given by representatives from the host country, from the from the agency there, who more or less introduce the agency and the way their agency works. Well, it's very clear that this year uh, uh, this is things are different compared to the to the to the usual way of doing things. Uh, uh, we are not in Stockholm. Unfortunately, although I, I just checked and the weather in Stockholm seems to be very, very cold. So if you, uh, uh, you, so maybe we at least avoid that. But it's good that we have Mats Velin and Andrea Barbu from the medicines uh, agency in, in Sweden who will uh, 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 present a little bit on 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 well the virtual host country maybe then uh, uh, for this uh, for this meeting. Um, Mats, I think hardly needs an introduction. He's a long-standing veteran, uh, a, a staple of of these meetings. I don't know if he has uh, missed uh, if he has attended all the EU CMC forums since two thousand seven. I don't know, but uh, uh, I would not be surprised. Uh, Andrea. Uh, is one of the newer experts in, in the medicines uh, agency in Sweden. I met her uh, a few years ago. Uh, she's clearly one of the uh, new rising stars there. Um, well, without too much ado, please, Mats, Andrea, I'd like to hand over to you and to, to give the real kickoff of the meeting. Thank you. So thank you very much for, for that help. It's a bit, uh, and thank you, Martin, for that introduction. I have missed one of the of the CMC forums, the one in Ireland. I'm I'm really still sad about that, but but uh, things happen. Uh, and as you said, that it's quite cold. So we since. Um, <laughs> Since we realize this is a virtual, you are not coming here. We just cancel the good weather. We wait. Hopefully, we can take it some some um, some further years ahead. So this is Sweden. It's a, quite an oblong country. It's in the south. You have something very close to. You have a bridge over to Denmark. In the north, you have a lot of reindeers, and you have the polar circle, and. Uh, and if we go to the next one, this is somewhat out of focus, a, a picture of the formal center of Sweden, which is the Stockholm Central Station. Uh, and um, you were supposed to be here be, be, because Radisson Blue Waterfront, the hotel where we should be, is like 50 meters away from this, from this uh, central station. So let's hope we can get there some other time. Uh, this is... I may be biased. This is the real center of Sweden. This is the Medical Progress Agency, which is in Uppsala, some 70 kilometers north of, of Stockholm. Uh, you may know this, but I still put it. So what we are doing is the approval of new applications and variations for human and veterinary products. We do some lab testing and inspectors of such product as information to the to healthcare providers and to the public. We do the approval of clinical trials. We are involved in control of medical devices, cosmetics and narcotics, and not um, very, I should say, a bit odd is that we have it responsible for information to the public and profession on risk and treatment in case of acute poisoning by products or other chemical substances or biological toxins. This is something we got. We ha had other parents before, but it's now within our system. So in total, there's 870 employees. 336 of those are directly involved in approval of of uh, clinical trials, new applications, safety updates, and variations. 
So what we do, we do outside this one. So in non-corona times, we have quite a lot of, of uh, meetings with uh, scientific advice meetings with companies coming here in relation to submissions of clinical trials, marketing authorization and variations. Now we have less so. We have, we still have some virtual meetings with companies on the same topics. Uh, and the, the third bullet point is what we are doing now. We have some presentation on scientific regulatory meetings like CASTI and others, and as well as having some uh, educational activities with workshops and uh, lectures at universities and so on. So, and one important part in this is also the, the, the work we do with fellow agencies within Sweden. So for our side and fr from the medical product side, I would say the main contact is the National Board of Health and Welfare, which is in Sweden, Swedish called Socialstyrelsen. They are responsible for legislation in relation to blood cells and some stockpiling issues. And they, of course, there there's there's shared issued of of uh, of uh, setting re requirements for for these, as these may also be used for as source materials for for biological products. We have the Public Health Agency of Sweden, Folkhälsomyndigheten who do the recommendations for vaccinations. They have some information of shortages in particular for vaccines. They have uh, issues where we really interact with them are now on devices because they are the key players in the COVID-19 issue and having daily press conferences. And for example, for the device, it has been a lot of discussion on testing test kits for for COVID-19 and so on. So we have very sort of close collaboration with those. We also have the Health and Social Care Inspectorate, which where there is an overlap of inspection of blood and tissue establishment. So we have an, an, uh, a new governmental activity where the government had pointed out some strategic collaboration which would put for for Sweden to work more with, which affects a lot of national agencies and some other parties. So one of four points are, is, is called health and life sciences. And whether to coordinate this work and clarify priorities and serve as a link between actors the position of coordinator at national level has been introduced. And uh, certain, here are a number of the, the aspects that, that impact us, which is effective process for implementation of new therapies, introduction of medical device legislation, more comp company introduced clinical trials within the Swedish medical care, high quality of clinical trials, Sweden leading at actor in precision medicine. So, and as a consequence of this, we have introduced an innovation office here at the agency. So this should be a simple and clear contact point if you want to discuss with us. And, and it's also to show to the outer world that what are we going to do? What are we doing? What are we going to do? And make and make sure that people are knowledgeable about, about this and can can take part in those as far as they want. And also then doing some analysis. Okay, what happened in the outer world? Where where do we need to? How do we need to to change our work? And how what do we need to do to to be prepared for what may happen? Uh, one, I think, quite an important issue is the increase in regulatory understanding of scientists and innovators, because there's a lot of good ideas out there, but people may not know exactly how to bring these forward. And there we can be a help to them and having some educational and informational activities. 
and it's also uh, to facilitate regulatory scientific advice to all impacted, which could be small, medium-sized enterprises, academic groups, and so on. And in this, since you can imagine, this can be very wide, very wide span of questions. So it's a network of contact points, not really a formal organizational group. So this gives us some flexibility in forming groups with, with the correct expertise. So I, I think I touched upon this, but really to say that the really to get to people to understand the value of regulatory knowledge in their development and which and by that and having lower hurdles to meet with the agency i hope people can come here e earlier and easier and uh, so they can better understand what is really required because this is make it right first time avoid it's also tips that oh th this trial in the way it's planned is not going to do any good don't do it, or and there and therefore there's not a need. Make sure that that, that you don't need to re repeat the trials because you didn't plan it in the end. Come to us and give some good feedback on that and take that into in, into consideration. So in the end, we will have. It will also simplify our work. It will be better application. There will be fewer questions and therefore also quicker approvals. So I'm going to talk a little bit on three different projects which runs within this. And one is virtual clinical trials. The other one is AdLife, the competence center for additive manufacture. And then there's also an ATMP project. And Andrea will work more, we'll talk more on that later on. So for the virtual clinical trials, you may know this, but it's I think it's interesting. It's, it's a way of, of new way of collecting safety and efficacy data from clini clinical trials from the very start through execution to, to the follow-up and really making use of, of uh, technologies, uh, apps and monitoring devices and online social platforms to conduct each state of the, the with the comfort of the patient so that you don't have to go here or go to your medical center. You can do this from home. You have it sent, sent to you. And this also allows us to, yeah, people far away from the center can attend, but also that if we have some, some uh, rare diseases where you may have, I don't know, but very few in the whole of Sweden, we can we can have all of these into one trial because they don't need to travel anywhere. They can do this from home and, and report as appropriate. So we have an, a pre-project now to, to identify condition to be fulfilled to initiate plans and do these trials. We have five different multidisciplinary groups, including companies, CROs, clinical trial units, researchers, trade association, pharmacies, etc. And we, as we are responsible, the MBA is responsible for approval and supervision of clinical trials. We will lead the project and make sure that action is coordinator, we, coordinated. Sorry, uh, we have some uh, workshop planned, and uh, this has really gained a large interest and. Next step is not going to Ireland. Next step is is uh, trying to see if this works well. You may run it in real life, really from the beginning. Otherwise, we may need to do some project in a little bit, a little more wide number of people involved and so on. But but I think this is really what we see and can be very useful. Uh, coming over to this ad life and it goes with the additive manufacturing life sciences and uh, so we have there are 20 partners in in academia industry and public sector to support this and this could be collaborative research project that will be run by students or or by by dedicated research engineers uh, and the this uh, the themes include, I would say, for us, it would be bioprocess materials, implants, bioprinting in particular, some medications, 
and so we are involved in in uh, with the getting regulatory knowledge here to people involved in this that how should you if this is going to be is this a medicinal product in the first place and if it's so how can you run your clinical trials and what should you do to, to, to further commercialize this one and it's also fair to say that we are also there to learn ourselves because this is a really fast fast evolving topic and uh, where where we should be on board with what is what is happening, uh, and the last one I want would like to to mention is is on advanced therapies, and uh, Andrea will talk more on that. That is a project led led by Rice, which is the Re Research Institute of Sweden, and we have like 15 partners across healthcare, industrial, regulatory bodies, and academia, and uh, the aim is that we should be a leader act leading actor in 2030, let's hope so. Uh, we have here at the agency then recruited the ATMP coordinated to, to uh, allow increased work with these, these different bodies and uh, sharing information and knowledge. It's, um, it's also allow us to increase work with normative aspects, not only to, to, to give uh, advice directly to the actors but also to work with other agencies to 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 write good good and useful full uh, guidelines so with that i i bring you over to andrea with i hope this works i don't yeah, see it maybe. Uh, maybe I can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah yes hello everybody so i'm i'm going to talk a bit uh, more about advanced therapies in in uh, npa and the medical product agency in sweden and i'm going to touch upon a bit of what Matt has started to to talk about uh how we work with other ag agency and with other actors that are involved in atmps in uh, in uh, in sweden but i also uh, will give you a short uh, um summary of our core uh, work in 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 <laughs> okay we will get it right <laughs> yeah. uh, about what what we are our core work in in national procedures and so on in in um in um, um sweden so um um of course um even for advanced therapies our our purpose here is to uh, or aim is to maximize the uh, availability of ATMP's products with a positive benefit risk uh, profile for the patients. And for this purpose, we, we uh, want to have continuous interaction with other government agencies, healthcare professionals and research communities, as well as manufacturing industries. Um, in this interaction, we, 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 we aim to deliver uh, clear communications to healthcare professionals and patients and uh, influence policy development at national and international levels and of course build uh, uh, adequate uh, capacity to meet these challenging scientific and technological advances within the field of ATMPs. And I would say that within Swedish uh, medical product agency, this um, uh, work is coordinated of, uh, by uh, um, the advanced therapy group, which is a special group. I'm going to talk about a, a bit uh, about that later on. And as I said, in the end, I'm going to touch upon uh, very shortly what exactly we are doing on a national regulatory procedures for human and veterinary advanced uh, medicines. So the Advanced Therapy Group um, is a multidisciplinary group which was formed in 2008 already. It has monthly meetings uh, and it's intended as an intern scientific and regulatory forum. Uh, we are discussing policies, with it. we are discussing um, a new, a new uh, science uh, and we are discussing um, actual procedures that are coming to to uh, um, MPA for approval or for advice. Um, 
It is also intended as a support group for our representatives to the Committee for Advanced Therapies, to CAHMP, to CVMP, to Scientific Advice Working Party and uh, Biological Working Party. And um, the group um, has right now around 15 uh, people uh, with various expertise. We have inspectors, tissue and cell establishment inspectors and GMP inspectors. We have quality preclinical and clinical assessors, veterinary medicine assessors and GMO uh, assessors that are attending, attending these meetings. And as I already said, uh, the group is, is uh, having as an aim to promote national strategy for an increasingly strong ATMP uh, industry in Sweden, as well as for internationalization. Uh, promoting ATMP availability in Swedish healthcare, uh, and of course providing advice and clarification on uh, ATMP-related general regulatory requirements. As already mentioned by Matt, uh, we have an active uh, dialogue with other national agencies, uh, which could be directly implicated in, in uh, ATMP issues or in other uh, uh, products that are sort of borderline between ATMP and maybe other types of therapies. And uh, uh, Mats has already mentioned National Board of Health and Welfare, Health and Social Care Inspectorate, the Dental and Pharmaceutical Benefits Agency and the Swedish Association of Local Authorities, authorities and Regions. Um, with respect to our interaction with um, uh, um, um, more broad and more direct hands-on initiatives of developing ATMPs in in Sweden, we we our purpose is to have uh, early interaction on ATMP-related scientific and regulatory requirements uh, to be able to guide and support uh, national ATMP innovation. And I choose to to talk very shortly about two initiatives that are uh, in Sweden um, quite powerful right now and one of these is ATMP Sweden which, which is a national network of the Swedish ATMP field promoting collaboration towards accelerated and effective patient solutions and it has several subgroups one of these is Swell Life which is uh, a supporting functions required to take the ATMP from the preclinical stage to, to uh, the patient, and the CAMP camp, which is uh, focusing on um, um, the science and the technology required to translate the, the ATMPs from the lab to the clinic. Um, the latest um, close contact we had with the ATMP Sweden was to participate or to review a document uh, that they have been written in order to guide especially the small uh, companies and the academic groups that are intended to come for their first um, um, clinical trial application specifically for ATMPs to, to, to the agency. Um, another um, rather extended a project that it's running right now in Sweden, uh, which Mats has already mentioned, is coordinated by RISE, Research Institutes of Sweden, uh, which is a governmental research institute providing uh, comprehensive support in a wide range, of, uh, range of, of research areas, including ATMPs. So ATMP is only one part of their activities. And uh, uh, the, the project that we are involved in, um, will involve national coordination but also increased international contacts and collaboration in the field um, aims to increase ability for the industrial development and manufacturing of uh, ATMP in Sweden uh, as well as effective processes for research and accessibility of cost-effective ATMPs in the Swedish healthcare and of course a, um, MPA the medical product agency will have a quite important role in increasing knowledge, especially in the regulatory requirements and uh, um, both for uh, the um, initiators, but also for us securing future needs for competence. 
Um, so this was a bit about the general aspects of the of the activities, uh, ATP activities related, ATP related activities in Sweden. I will very shortly um, go through our core activities. What exactly are we working in the field of ATMPs? Um, and uh, the Swedish MP inspectorate, that they have, uh, uh, um, um, of course, ATMP-related national activities, and that involves uh, GMP authorization and authorization of tissue and cell establishments. Um, just for information, I, I put in, we have a timeline of 90 days for this kind of procedures. And at this point, there are seven GMP authorized manufacturers in Sweden, most of them in uh, clinical for clinical trials and hospital exemptions. Uh, and we have 11 tissue and cell establishment authorized in Sweden for collection of material intended for medical product development. We have more than 50 tissue and, and cell establishment authorized in general for collection of material intended for transplantation or other type of, of um, uh, treatments, but uh, these are not authorized by the medical product, product agency in Sweden, but the health and social care inspectorate. So there we have to work together. There are several tissue and cell establishments that have, have or need to have two different authorizations. Um, with respect to the um, scientific advice activity that we have in, in, in uh, the ATMP field in Sweden, I put up here a um, statistical view of what we have seen in the last eight years. And this is a percentage of all um, scientific advices, including quality questions. So it's specifically for that relative to all biological products that we have seen in the last years. And uh, we see an increase in the interest of getting advice in this kind of uh, products, for this kind of product. Last year, we were having around 50% of all biologicals were just related to ATMPs. The applicants include academic groups and SMEs and Big Pharma and uh, uh, many of these uh, these advices um, are for products that are very early in the development stage. We have seen various type of products, starting with plasmids and viruses and viral vectors, somatic cell-based therapies, tissue engineered based, uh, based lab therapies, embryonic stem cells, IPCs, CRISPR-Cas technology, cell tissues, medical device, combined products, and of course, uh, uh, gene-modified cell-based uh, therapies like RT cells. Um, in the clinical trials, we've seen uh, also an increase and a sort of shift from cell therapies that were more often seen in our applications towards gene therapy in the last years. Uh, again, we have a procedure timeline of 90 days, and the sponsors that we see are academic groups and SMEs and Big Pharma. Uh, and uh, right now we have uh, uh, um, clinical trials running for products uh, uh, related to somatic cell therapy, such as mesenchymal stromal cells or cells for immune therapy, and gene therapy, mainly adeno-associated viral uh, vector-based products and CAR T cells. I would like to touch upon the hospital exemption uh, um, activity in uh, Sweden. Um, this is intended for ATMPs which are prepared on a non-routine basis and are used in a hospital based on prescri prescri prescription for a specific um, patient. Uh, this has a procedure timeline of, of, of uh, 120 days, which includes um, includes the GMP authorization. Of course, there are some clock stops there. Um, in Sweden, of course, uh, um, the guidelines for GMP for ATMP applies, and um, uh, quality requirements for hospital exemptions is quite similar to. Uh, those for clinical trial applications. Um, I just want to mention that uh, the 
advanced therapy group uh, that I've been talking about a bit earlier is currently drafting a document with a quite detailed um, uh, guidance for how to apply for such uh, procedure hospital exemptions. In the last nine years, we have seen 12 hospital exemptions applications, so they are not very uh, many. Six of th those are still ongoing, and um, most of them were related to cell-based therapies, uh, mesenchymal stromal cells, cells chondrocytes, and keratinocytes mostly. And just um, as an information, these approvals uh, relate to approximately 10 patients per year, and uh, they are approved for a period of five years. So this was a short introduction of what we are doing here. So if you have. Yes, so we go to the the very last one. So thank you very much for listening. It's difficult to, <laughs> to say to you that we, we don't see you. We can expect what you look like, though. Uh, but uh, with that, I we close our session and uh, leave to Martin. And if there are any questions to what we have been discussing. Thank you.